What's going on everybody? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a brine shrimp incubator. Yes, this small tube is going to be home of not one, not a hundred, but thousands of shrimps, also known as sea monkeys. And weirdly enough, they were a big thing in the 90s and early 2000s, where people used to have them as pets, but me, I'm using them as food. So brine shrimp are a highly nutritious food source. They contain a high level of protein, lipids and other essential nutrients that are important for the growth and survival of the tank inhabitants. Feeding a diet that includes brine shrimp can help maintain their health and color of your reef tank, as well as stimulate natural feeding behaviors. Number one, we have a brine shrimp net and the incubator itself, which comes with everything you need, except for one thing, and that is the pump. Number two, we have the eggs. Yes, in this sealed bag, there are probably millions of sea monkeys just waiting to be hatched and eventually be eaten. I'll show you the tags on each thing so you can pause the video if you want to read it. On number three, we have the pump. So this is, I think, one of the greatest items you can get for a cheap price. And it's this wireless pump I'll show you guys more in detail everything in a second. Let's start with the brine shrimp net. So nothing special, just a brine shrimp net to capture the soul of as many shrimps as possible. Now we have the incubator. So as I mentioned, it comes with everything you need to set it up. It's basically just a plastic and cylindric type of incubator. Here are the instructions for the installation. I like the fact that it is very simple to install and you need not more than common sense. Every piece just kind of fits into place. So this piece is what is going to be holding the incubator into place. You can have it inside or outside of the tank. We also have this bulb, so it's just like a way of controlling the amount of sea monkeys when you're harvesting them. As you can see here, the net starts making more sense as they will come out from the tube and get caught by it. This other piece is called a check bulb. It's basically to stop the fluid from returning through the tube when the pump goes off and prevents any damage to it. Next, we have the air pump. You can see that it comes with this small screen. It actually looks and feels really well built. As I mentioned before, it is wireless and the battery lasts a lot. I had it running for two days without any problem, which it shouldn't be because the advertise claims that it can last for 60 hours straight. So another nice thing that I like is that it has these black rubber pieces surrounding the clip that reduces the vibration noises that it produces, which honestly are quite low. 
Of course, it has its own USB cable for charging and it also comes with a check bulb, more tubing and this little air stone. But I think I'm going to use only the pieces that the incubator came with. So I'm just going to save all of these just in case. Again, we have the user manual. Just pause it if you're interested. Now let's try to set all this up. So here I am trying to figure out the best place to install the incubator. I was deciding between inside or outside the sump because of the temperature. But I opt to leave it outside because we were just going to have it running for probably two or three days anyways. And these creatures are known to adapt to many circumstances. As a random fact, brine shrimps were actually sent to space once as an experiment and they came back safe and sound. So yes, I'm feeling national heroes to my reef tank. Now that we've decided where everything is going to be, let's actually set it up. So for this, like I said, it is very easy and everything just falls into place. So the tube is connected, then you run it inside the base and pull it out from the dedicated hole and then just connect the base with the incubator. Now the check bulb. Here I'm just making sure I'm placing it facing the right direction for the airflow. So basically you want the airflow to pass and the water to be stopped from, re from returning when the pump goes off. Next, I'm just curious if the pump has charge in it and it does. So now we can start right away. So now I'm placing the pump against the outside of the tank. Then we measure and cut the desired length of the tube. We install the check bulb at the end of it. And here I'm just making sure that everything is sealed tight. Next step is just simply connect the pump with the other end of the check bulb using another tube. And again, make sure it is really tight. We now add filter water to the incubator. Let's just check if everything works accordingly. And yeah, it does. Next, we add some salt to it. The amount will depend on the incubator itself. So it's important to check the user manual for all this. Now, the moment that we have all been waiting for, the sea monkeys. So I'm just going to test with half a teaspoon of brine shrimps. It all looks good, so now we put everything back in place. And I guess we will just wait. It's been a day now and it is time to turn off the pump. 
We now have to wait until the unhatched eggs and shrimp separate from one another. Eggs will flow to the top and shrimps will stay at the bottom. All of these moving dots are thousands of brine shrimp ready to be the main course for this feeding session. So we take everything apart. I used these forceps to keep pressure on the tube. We now release the pressure and then let everything flow on this dedicated messenger. Now that we have almost every single creature inside the jar, it is time to feed the tank. In this case, I will only focus on my corals, and I will use this coral feeder to help me reach and dose each one individually. As you can see, many of them are escaping, but their fate is sealed because the fish will finish the job. All right, well, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I would immensely appreciate your support if you like and subscribe. Again, thank you and until next time.